I saved the producer for last because I spent the most time with him and learned the most from him. So my name is Chris Wolf. I'm the producer of Ask This Old House, which is a television show on PBS. And I'm driving with uh, Slater Harrison right now to scout a location that we are going to shoot tomorrow morning for the TV show. It's about 5.30. Uh, we're going to go make sure that we have everything prepared for the shoot that we're doing tomorrow. Uh, a lot of people ask me what does a TV producer do, and uh, there's, no, there's no short answer to that, but there are a lot of things that happen to have to happen behind the scenes to actually uh, get to the point where you can make a TV show. So I spent a lot of my time picking the, the story ideas that we're going to cover on the show, uh, finding the right people to appear on camera, making sure that we have all of the right materials and props and tools ready to go, um, and then making sure that we've got the right crew, uh, the right uh, cameraman, the right uh, production assistant, uh, making sure that lunch arrives on time and everybody's well fed. So there's a lot that goes into it. Um, and uh, I definitely have a lot of help doing that. Um, but ultimately it's my responsibility to make sure that, that we are as prepared as possible for, um, for the shoot. So the producer has the freedom to make macro decisions like a segment about a water rocket. Or lobby to devote a whole episode to kid stuff. However, he then has the responsibility to nail down all those pesky micro details that actually make it happen. Here's what he said about pursuing a career in the industry. Uh, so sometimes people ask me, you know, how do you break into television? How do you, how do you get into television? And, um, you know, the amazing thing is there is a list at the end of almost any TV show or any film, there's a list of the people that made that TV show or that film. And not only is it a list of people, but there's a list of their jobs. And when you look at the credits of a TV show or a film, uh, look at it carefully, and if, if you are at all interested in working in television or working in film, f you know, find out what, what does a best boy do, what does a gaffer do, what does somebody who does craft service do, um, what does a director do, you know, th th there's, uh, those titles are right there, and, and you can watch any film or any TV show and look at that, and, and it's important to realize, too, the people that you see there those are regular people. These aren't, you know, they were, they've had some training and they have some uh, unique skills that they've, that they've learned. Um, but these are jobs that are available to anybody that wants to, wants to really uh, dedicate themselves to that field. Um, so learn more about it and, uh, and just know that um, if you put yourself in the, right, in the right situation and you're willing to learn, you can absolutely um, you can absolutely, uh, you know, learn more about it and possibly, you know, uh, do it as a career. Uh, I'm certainly glad I did. The relationship between the producer and the director was particularly interesting. For example, Chris the producer wanted math and science concepts sprinkled throughout the segment. David the director was concerned about the time constraints, but they came to a balanced solution between them. There's an expression. The whole is more than the sum of the parts. It's almost like 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 10. It might not make sense numerically, but it does make sense in teamwork. Everyone on the team spoke their mind, and there were disagreements. But they also listened to each other, and there was mutual respect. It wasn't as if one person had all the answers. Here's Chris again with a funny pizza story. So, um, a lot of people don't realize everything that goes into making a TV show or even a TV commercial. I, I worked on a lot of TV commercials before I ended up working on this show. And um, one of my first jobs in television was a, as a production assistant for a Papa Gino's uh, pizza commercial. So Papa Gino's is a, is a you know, pizza place like Pizza Hut or Domino's. And, uh, and uh, the shot that you see in every pizza commercial is where 
the one slice of pizza comes out of the, the, uh, the, the pie and the cheese stretches and the steam kind of comes off of it and the crust flakes just right. Uh, in order to get that shot, it required a team of about 30 people. Um, uh, there was a hand model who had a, a freshly pressed shirt uh, over his arm. He was actually holding the uh, spatula and removing it. Um, there were about, I would say, probably 50 different pizzas that were being made at all, at all times during the day. Uh, when the right pizza was ready, it would be rushed out to the set and it would be placed down and everyone, the director would yell, action. Uh, they would go over the top of the pizza with a heat gun uh, so that the cheese was completely melted. They'd go over the top of the pizza with a steamer so that there would be steam that barreled off of it. And there wasn't enough time for the guy who was doing the, the uh, steaming to get completely out of the shot. So he had to duck behind the, uh, behind the counter, the kitchen counter. And uh, later when I was watching this, uh, this commercial on TV, I, I remember thinking, I know there's a guy in that kitchen counter right now. Everyone else watching this commercial at home had no idea, but I knew that there was a guy crouched on all fours, hiding down there, uh, hoping that he got his hand out of the shot just in time. And uh, uh, I'll never watch TV commercials the same. Uh, my, my job in all of this was for probably 10 hours one day was to uh, wipe off the spatula between takes and make sure that the spatula was gleaming um, for you know for each shot and ready to go so that's uh, depending upon the job that can be what uh, what a production assistant does on a uh, on a TV commercial aside from the humor in Chris's story the underlying truth will resonate with my middle school students they're less likely to be passively overwhelmed by the power of television advertisements because they've actively manipulated video. They know it's not all real. In addition to being more media savvy than average, people who work with video understand the creative potential. If they're willing to learn the skills and put enough time and work into it, they can lead their video projects to wherever their imaginations go. I hope that people who've begun to discover video will broaden their view as they see how a professional crew operates. The talent, camera, grip, director, production coordinator, and producer band together to create something greater than any individual could. From here, the raw video goes to post-production. It will emerge and air in February on PBS five months after the initial taping. I think these guys plan ahead. By the time the editors are finished, a whole morning of production will be winnowed down to eight minutes for the water rocket segment.